Sean, the staff here, and it's time for the Man of Steel movie monologue leading up to Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. This movie was directed by Zack Snyder and it stars the all-star cast of Henry Cavill, Amy Adams, Michael Shannon, Kevin Costner, Diane Lane, Lawrence Fishburne, and Russell Crowe. Now I'm going to be talking about the good, I'm going to be talking about the bad, and I'm going to go into some of the more important characters of the story. So for a quick plot synopsis, Man of Steel is the origin story for Superman for the new DC Cinematic Universe. It tells the origin of Superman and brings us up to today where he must stop General Zod from turning the Earth into a new Krypton. Good things about this movie. I really enjoy the beginning of this movie. I feel like this movie starts off high and then kind of starts to valley off. Valley off. This movie starts off on planet Krypton and it shows pretty much like what happens. Uh, why planet Krypton blows up, why Superman is sent from Krypton to planet Earth, and Russell Crowe plays his dad, Jor-El, and they couldn't have picked a better casting. I'll get into him more in a little bit, but the beginning of this movie I really enjoy. I really enjoy what happens on Planet Krypton, showing us all of that. I enjoy seeing Superman, Clark Kent, traveling the world in the beginning of the movie, trying to find a place in this world, trying to help people but not be the center of attention. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. It's when Lois Lane, played by Amy Adams, joins the picture where things start to go downhill for me. And I'll get into her character a little bit more later too. One of the big things that people have a problem with with this movie is just the complete destruction. I feel the same way, but at the same time I feel like it's necessary to a point. I mean, this is quote unquote gods going against each other in a civilian surrounding. Of course there's going to be chaos and destruction. My problem with it is Superman doesn't act like Superman a whole lot in this movie. What Superman should be doing in these kinds of fights is trying to get the bad guys out of civilian territory. Getting people out of harm's way. Unless you're Lois Lane, you're not getting saved in this movie. He doesn't save anybody in this movie but Lois Lane. He tells people, get out of here or leave, it's not safe. but that's about it. To go along the lines of Superman doesn't act like Superman in this movie, there's a point in the movie where General Zod is trying to turn the Earth into a new Krypton, and he has all of like the descendants of Krypton to bring them back in this ship. And Superman crashes through this ship and he says, no, what are you doing? If you destroy this ship, you're going to kill off our entire race. Superman says, they had their chance. And boom blows up the ship. Superman kills off his entire race. What? <laughs> I mean, Superman, he's supposed to be the savior, the big hero, the OG, and he's just like, whatever, they had their chance. <laughs> what? To this day, that still blows me away. And then at the end, when he kills General Zod, there had to have been another way to stop him. Instead of just like, <laughs> Snapping his neck, killing him. This is a Superman that's not afraid to get his hands dirty, and yes, I know that DC wanted, and I believe still wants to take this route of darker stories because of the success of the Dark Knight trilogy. It works for Batman, it doesn't work for Superman. Superman's supposed to be that sign of hope and that sign of peace, and if he's okay with just taking lives like that, I mean, even just throwing Zod through all the buildings in Metropolis and pretty much annihilating and destroying that city, expect there to be damage in this movie. But when you wipe out all of Smallville and you wipe out all of Metropolis, just because you're having a fist fight with these guys, you're Superman. You can fly anywhere in the world like that. Get them out of civilian territory. Throw them in a desert for all you care. At least people are out of harm's way, but we need everything to be as catastrophic as possible. And then, one of my biggest gripes of this movie is the final scene when Clark Kent goes to Metropolis and works for the Daily Planet. First of all, unless he's forged 
his resume like he has like in the beginning of the movie with jobs, there's no way in heck he's going to get a job at the Daily Planet without at least college experience and a degree in like journalism. There's no way. Second of all, everyone in this building has seen Superman up close before his final confrontation and throwdown with General Zod. The whole like main cast of the Daily Planet is standing right there. I've always had this issue too. Just throw on the glasses and nobody's gonna recognize you? No. No. I still don't buy it. I still don't buy it. But when you're like face to face with him, all I need to do is Hey everyone, I'm Clark Kent. Hey everyone, I'm Superman. Hey everyone, I'm Clark Kent. Now I'm Superman. This is not a disguise. Just like the dinky little mask, I mean that's a bit more believable if you're wearing like a hood or something, but if you're just going on glasses, that's not a disguise. And there's no indication of how much time has passed, so it definitely feels like it could have been a day to maybe a week. After the fight with General Zod, Metropolis is pretty much leveled. Like, there's nothing left. That last scene, he's riding a bike, I believe, through Metropolis to the Daily Planet. Metropolis is back to normal. They fix the city like that. And I know this is gonna sound very nitpicky, but those are pretty much like my major gripes with this movie other than a couple characters. And the other thing is that it's just, I don't know how to really say this, the way that this movie flows, it just doesn't work for me. Usually with movies like this, it would be all right, but the scene with Krypton in the beginning, that's, that's great. Then it kind of slows down pace to build the story up. And that takes about what feels like a half an hour, maybe 40, 45 minutes. This movie's close to like three hours long, so it's definitely a long movie. Once the action starts, it's pretty much like non-stop action for an hour and a half. Which, when you just have like this grand scale destruction, it just, it feels like a lot. It feels like a lot. Those are my major gripes with this film, but like I said, there are still some redeeming qualities of this movie. The thing that really works for me in this movie, right here, the soundtrack by Hans Zimmer. This is amazing. This soundtrack is OG. This is some of Hans Zimmer's best work right here. The action songs, which there needs to be a lot because there's a lot of action in this movie, it's fantastic. Right here, he had a drum set orchestra for this movie. I've always been a big drum guy. Percussion is in my blood. Something like this blows me away. Blows me away. This is fantastic. This right here is fantastic. The drums pretty much carry this music forward, but then again, there's also some heartfelt music to this soundtrack. And the biggest thing is, since this is like the reintroduction of Superman, this is the reboot, this is starting over, it's up to Hans Zimmer to top the classic Superman theme, the da 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 that everybody recognizes, everybody's heard at one point in time, and he does it. His Superman theme in this movie is totally believable. You can close your eyes and listen to that, and you're like, yes, yes, this is Superman. This is Superman. I love it. Now let's get into some characters. First off, like I mentioned before, Russell Crowe plays Jor-El, Superman's father. He does fantastic in this movie. This was perfect casting right here. He does an amazing job just capturing that character. It's one that I know has probably had a lot of ground in the comics, but like I said, I'm not a big Superman guy. I don't read Superman comics. And just watching him on screen, you know Russell Crowe. From everything from Gladiator to May Lizarab, all of his big movies, he gets you, he captures you, and he does it in this movie. He is fantastic in this movie. I loved every second he was on. My only problem was after Krypton's done and destroyed and Superman finds the ship, his conscience is like in this computer and there's like a hologram of him. It's pretty much like Superman can meet his dad. I feel like it would have worked a little bit more effectively if it's been like videos to give Superman the information he needs rather than interacting with him like his dad is there, like his dad didn't die. It takes away the weight of his death, I feel like. Especially when he even talks to General Zod. 
it just takes away the weight of his death if he can still be there in consciousness. Then we got Kevin Costner playing Pa Kent. He was one of the things that I hated about this movie. And it wasn't that he was doing a bad job acting, it was just the writing behind his character. I didn't like it at all. I hated it. I hated it. From the very first scene you see him, when Superman's a boy, he saves his classmates from drowning in a river after their bus like drives off of a bridge. And all these people are coming to their house being like, we know what your son is, like we saw what he did. And his fathering for Clark is, we've talked about this, you're not supposed to use your powers in public. And Superman, Clark Kent asks, what was I supposed to do, just let them die? And he says, maybe. Who says that? Who with a soul would say that? His character and raising Superman in the scenes that they show, it's no wonder why he's okay with killing people. I mean, he has not once in this movie trained him or taught him about saving lives until the last scene that he's in, which I felt like was his most effective scene, and that's the scene where he dies. When he dies in a tornado, he dies saving people, trying to save their dog, and when Superman is about to go out and save him, he says, no, like, don't, and then he's off, and he's dead. That was his most effective scene in this movie. And finally, let's talk about General Zod, played by Michael Shannon. Michael Shannon does a fantastic job in this movie, playing General Zod. A fantastic job. Michael Shannon is an actor that can be in a terrible movie, and still be really good. And this right here is an example. Man of Steel is an okay movie, but Michael Shannon as General Zod, he really shines in this movie. He puts forth 110% into his acting in every scene, and he just steals every scene that he is in. He is incredible in this movie. I really enjoy his character. And his character as a villain, he's one that I say this all the time about villains, about great villains. He is a villain that you can understand, that you get his motivations. This is a man who has lost everything. He's lost everything. He's watched as his planet has died before him, before he finally went and took action, which ended up being too late. His planet dies, and then when he tries to create a new planet like his own, bring forth all of the descendants, all the people from Krypton, and fails, and just sees it taken away from him by Superman, and then the rage that he feels after the fact, he is brilliant, brilliant in this movie, and I give him credit. Michael Shannon is the best actor in this movie, I will say that. He's the best actor, he's the best character, and he has the best parts of the movie. So overall, like I've been saying, Man of Steel is a very flawed movie. It's not necessarily a bad movie, it's just a very flawed movie. There are still parts of this movie that I enjoy. There are still parts of this movie that I like. There are certain characters that I like. There are certain things that I like. Michael Shannon and Russell Crowe are amazing. If the first 40-45 minutes of this movie would have been like the rest of the movie, this would have been a really good movie in my opinion. Henry Cavill, I haven't really talked about him yet. He's a decent Superman. I mean, he does a good job with what he's given. I've even read in a couple interviews recently, too, that he has a very minimalist take on Superman. He doesn't go too far into the comic lore. He wants to do what the filmmakers want him to do as Superman. And, well, with the material that they gave him, I think he did a good job. He definitely has the look to him. And overall, with what they gave him... Yeah, I, I believe him as Superman. Now, I don't believe his motives at times. There are times in this movie where I definitely feel like he is not acting like Superman. He's not doing things that Superman would do. But overall, he's a decent Superman. Lois Lane definitely could improve on her character. And Pa Kent. Just his whole character could have been rewritten way better. And I think it would have really helped the movie a lot, too. So that's my take on Man of Steel. As far as tying into Batman v Superman, I love the idea that they're taking 
some of the bigger flaws of this movie and addressing them in the next movie, um, especially that last battle in Metropolis. Bruce Wayne is there and he witnesses it firsthand and that's his motivations against Superman and it's totally believable. And just to see those steps being taken in the next movie makes me think that they're going to do a completely better job in Batman v Superman. Now by the time this video is out, a lot of people in the world have probably already seen this movie and can probably attest to it, but I'm not seeing it until Sunday, so that's just what I can go off of right now. Like I said, I think Henry Cavill plays an okay Superman, and so seeing him in that movie will be great as well. The soundtrack of this movie is incredible. The soundtrack in Batman v Superman is also incredible, which speaking of, will be my next video. So if you liked this video, if you liked my videos leading up to Batman v Superman, please check back to my channel real soon. I'll be having a Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice soundtrack breakdown. I'm going to be going through my favorite tracks uh, and important tracks and giving you tidbits, giving you my perspective of what I think is going to happen. I'm going to be making some guesses as to what I think is happening based on the track titles, what's the sounds of the track, and just general knowledge that I have about Batman v Superman before seeing the movie. So again, thank you all so much for watching this movie. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe below. Also check out my other videos that I've posted if you haven't already. I did a discussion on uh, The Dark Knight Returns, which Batman v Superman is heavily inspired by that source material, especially in the Batman portions of it. And I also did one on the Batman and Superman movie, World's Finest animated movie, so please check that one out as well. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you all next time.